Good, good. Glad you made it out to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hey, Mount Vale, let's do this. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. So glad you uh, joined us in our service and you're watching Facebook, live streaming, and all that good stuff. Uh, if you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Amen. It's in Psalms chapter 9. We're starting at verse 1. It says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee, and I will sing praises to thy name, O thou most high. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise for his word this morning? Amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated just for a few moments just to get a few quick announcements out of the way, and then we'll have you stand back up. We like to exercise you here, you up and down, up and down. <laughs> so, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll jump into our prayer, and we'll jump into our service this morning. Uh, don't forget, next Sunday morning, everybody knows what's happening next Sunday morning? Pastor appreciation, that's right. So uh, you probably got one of these little envelopes when you come in. Uh, we usually take up a love offering at that time, and if you'd like to, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart, if you forget your envelope, it's okay. Just mark it, Pastor Appreciation. Grab you a tithe envelope and mark it for him and Sister Norma. Uh, don't forget that. Oh, so that Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we're having a night of worship. It's called Encounter 2020. They helped me out up here. I never could remember this lady's name, and they finally wrote it down for me. <laughs> so I can remember. But uh, Sister Teresa Arwood and Purpose Church is going to be here. Their worship team is going to be part of it. Uh, uh, Marcella Makins from South Carolina is going to be here. Also, our own Mount Vale Worship and Choir is going to uh, be here tonight. So, uh, also, if you purchased a Counter Encounter t-shirt, uh, if you want to wear them that night, please wear them. They're encouraging you to wear it, but it's going to be a night of worship. How many know and understand worship is important? Amen. Amen. So, uh, don't forget that. Also, Wednesday is something new. Uh, September the 30th at 7 o'clock, we're having a new thing called Stump the Pastor. Now, it's not thumping. It's stumping, okay? <laughs> so... Uh, but Stump the Pastor, we're launching a question and answer forum uh, entitled Stump the Pastor, which will occur the last Wednesdays of each month. Uh, if you have any spiritual or biblical or doctrinal questions about things, uh, if you want some further understanding on and things like that, come out and be part of that. Pastor is going to have a panel, and there will be questions that you can ask at that moment. So be thinking about some good questions. I, I think I'm on the panel, and here's, here's my thing. You give him all the hard questions. I want the easy ones. Okay, just give me the easy ones. Amen. But if we can, uh, let's stand. We'll go to the Lord this morning in prayer. Uh, how many know we're living in a time of unrest and uncertainty? Amen. How many know we still serve a God that's on the throne? It don't matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life, he's still in charge and he's still in control. So don't ever forget that. Uh, I preached a little message in, at, the eight, at the early service this morning, and I'll just share the title with you because I thought it was a neat title. I borrowed the title from a church sign, and it said COVID. How many's heard the word COVID? If you ain't, you, you've been hid somewhere, <laughs> so you're, you're under a rock. But there's an acronym for it, and I liked it. It says, Christ offers victory in distress. That's what COVID stands for. Amen. Amen. Christ offers victory in distress. So anytime you see it on the TV, remember COVID, what it really means in our hearts and our lives. Amen. So let's pray this morning, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we've got a, a, a special thing after the fact. Uh, brother Brian, he, he was ready to sing, wasn't he? So, his, your wife didn't tell you, brother. I told her. I told her. So, Anyway, let's pray. Let's invite God into this service this morning. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness. We thank you for all that you're doing here at Mount Vale and all you're doing through the ministries here, Father God. We thank you for the lives you've touched and changed, Father God. We thank you, God, no matter what's happening in our life, we still can have victory through you, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask this morning, God, that you touch the singers and musicians, anoint them as they lead us into worship, God. Anoint our pastors. 
brings forth the word this morning. Anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work today. God, anoint us. Give us spiritual ears to hear what your word has to say, Father Lord. And Lord, most importantly, let your will and your way be done in this house, God. And do what your word says you will do, that you will inhabit the praises of your people today, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask, God, that you move like never before. Do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this house. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. Heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free in this place, Father. And Lord, we ask it all right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Our pastor's somewhere. There he is. Praise the Lord. You love the Lord this morning? Sheriff, how many you got before I get back to this loving the Lord stuff? He's got three. He's got one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, we are Trinitarian, but he needs more than three. Amen. I said, do you love the Lord this morning? Come on, let's give him praise. Hey, we've got a, uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, we're doing a little baby dedication this morning. Amen. And I always, uh, man, I tell you, I have learned so many lessons in life. And uh, one of the hardest lessons I ever learned, I guess, was with a little girl by the name of Remy. Some of y'all remember, I used to say we haven't met this little girl yet, and we don't know if we're going to like her or not, and uh, we met her, and uh, she's not very big, but she's, uh, we do like her, but she is the boss, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, but babies always touch my heart, and uh, you know what, uh, babies are usually drawn to me, I don't know why, maybe it's because I look like a big futon or something, I'm not real sure, but um uh, you know what a baby is? A baby is a promise to the world for a future. They're going to live longer than we're going to be here. How many is above 40 year old? Raise your hand if you are. Would it be safe to say that any child, most any child in here today, if by natural, if they don't go, if, if they don't leave this world through tragedy or accident or something, uh, they're going to outlive us. So what we are commissioned to do is we are commissioned to empower these babies, tell them of the story of Christ, amen, and the empowerment of God, the blood of Jesus, salvation that's real, that comes from God, and let them take this message on into the future, amen. We don't know. I, I really feel like the Lord's coming in my lifetime, but he may not. This world's seen dark times before. We're in a dark time right now, and, and maybe the Lord is coming, and I'm living like he is, and I hope you are too, but maybe not. Maybe he's not. Maybe, maybe there's a generation out there for this generation that's coming on to reach. Amen. All right, I would like for the family to come, amen, and, and bring little Abigail. Is that right? Is her name Abigail? Help me, uh, Grandma, somebody. Abigail. Abigail, sing. I'd like for the family to come. And uh, also, uh, when they get up here, then I'd like for the council and, and uh, everybody to come on up here on the stage. Uh, come on up here, guys. Everybody that comes on stage today has to preach five minutes, so just come on up. Go ahead, y'all give them their mics, please. And, uh, no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> hey, let's give them a wonderful hand. Isn't this a beautiful family? We're so excited, amen, uh, for the ladies, uh, what do we call them now, uh, the ladies' ministry, all those that are involved in leading ladies, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, council, uh, deacons, care pastors, let's get everybody up here, we need all the faith that we can get, amen. Um, I always say this, and I want to go ahead and say this, and then I want to get uh, Brother Philip to come. And uh, I, I hope it's all right. I added another scripture or two. Is that okay? I really felt, Lord, the leading of the Lord this morning when I was praying. And I really feel like I uh, got something from the Lord here. Uh, but I always say this, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of denominational systems that does infant baptism. You know, and I've talked to people, and you couldn't talk them out of it. And they said, I'm okay because I was baptized when I was a baby. At this point, this baby, don't it, it don't understand. It, it don't understand what Jesus really did. It, it has to come to the age of accountability. That's why we're up here. We're up here, and this family's saying that we're, we're going to nurture this child. We're going to make sure that it's raised in the fear and admonition of God. 
and it's going to be taught at a young age to serve the Lord. Amen. And we always pray against all these things that the enemy tries to bring in against children. Amen. But reality is this is a huge responsibility on behalf of the family and on behalf of the church. Amen. To set the right example to teach this baby uh, the ways of the Lord. Amen. So with that being said, uh, Brother Phillip's going to come. And I don't care if he reads every one of these scriptures. Up, but I, I, I put them all in my iPad that he sent me. And then we'll go from there, okay? Good morning, everybody. I'm reading uh, one verse. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to read it. This was uh, Courtney's favorite verse. It's Nehemiah 8, chapter 10. It says this, it says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. And this is the part <clears throat> she really liked. For this day is holy unto the Lord, neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I thought about that. I thought, you know, what a great scripture to pass to your family, to pass to your children. Because we who have hope, come on now, we who have hope in a resurrected Savior don't have to be sorry, as other people are. But we have a hope one day we'll all be together. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? Now, it, it's customary to uh, read scriptures, and that's what I'm going to do. And then James 1 and 17, please put it on the board if you can, uh, if you have it. It said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Psalms 127 and 3. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. That scripture right there says, that scripture right there says that there are arrows and that you and I are the ones who are aiming them. That, that, and it, it gives you the responsibility and this family the responsibility to aim this child in the right direction. Nehemiah 8 and 10, then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Luke 8, 18. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. And when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called unto him and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as the little child shall in no wise enter therein and I was praying this morning and uh, these are the scriptures that the Lord gave me and, uh, Jeremiah 1 4 said then the, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee now I, I want to say this when I read this 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 is, I'm talking to the family. When I read that this morning, the Spirit of the Lord said, I knew this day was coming. He said, I knew that Courtney was already going to be with me when you dedicated the baby. He said, I knew it. And he said, I also ordained a strength and a grace. And he said, don't succumb to a, to a hopeless spirit 
And depression is a real devil that really attacks real people. Let me tell you this right here. We've got to look past. We've got, we got to look past what the circumstances say sometimes. And look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. And I promise you, young man, the Lord has ordained a grace for you and this whole family. Hey, and let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. She is forever reserved in heaven. Can I tell you this? That Hebrews talks like that sometimes they get to look over the balcony of heaven. And I believe today that, that Courtney is in that cloud of witnesses this morning, children. She's looking over and she's seeing what's happening this morning. And you know, if she could talk to all of us today, you know what she'd say? Raise my babies right it's up to you guys now because see she's already receiving her reward and she's depending on us the church the family to bring these youngins up she wants to see them again and I believe y'all are going to do that he said before I formed you in the belly I knew the foreknowledge of God knew this day was coming and I want you to understand there's a grace of God that gets you through it are we going to cry sometimes you better believe we're going to cry sometimes I was looking through my phone. I was looking through my phone the other day. And I seen one of her text messages. She said, and I just cried. Not for her. For me. So we have this great challenge ahead of us. I got to finish my scripture and we're going to pray. We have this humongous, we're obligated. She didn't live haphazardly. She was serving the Lord when she left this world. And you know what? I want to admonish you for being a dad to these babies and bring them. I think we ought to give dad a big hand, don't you? And, th and the whole family that is just pitched in and start. But listen, our obligation is to see that these babies get reunited with their mother. Amen. Now I'm asking you, is this, is this what we're going to do, ain't it? Let, let, let me tell you this. I realize I'm smart enough to understand we're representative of a lot of different denominations and we don't care about that. Amen. Jesus don't draw no lines between his people. He don't. Man done that. Jesus don't do that. If you're a Christian and you're born again, we're going we're gonna to see her again. Amen. Can I finish my scripture now? It said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. One more thing. Always, 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 remember this, and you remember this, for you that's been through tragedy, always, out of tragedies, every time, God brings forth triumph. He does it every time. And I don't know what this baby's going to do. I don't know what she's going to do. And everybody's, everybody's, and all the prophets on Facebook, and everybody's saying, the Lord will be here at certain, I don't know. I pray he does. But I want you to understand, I want you to understand that God's will's got to be fulfilled in this earth before he does. And all of us may be gone one day, and she may take the gospel to the nations. I don't know. I have no idea, but I know when the Lord spoke to me this morning and took me, and I've read that scripture so many times, but it never meant more to me than it does this morning. He already seen your pain. Out of tragedy always comes triumph. Romans 8, 28 said, and we know all things are working. All things are not good, family. They're not good, but all things will work together for the good to them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Will you stand with me, family, in Mount Vale? Stand with me. Hey, and can I just tell you this? I want you to understand something, that we're, we're all, I'm guilty, we're all guilty of this. Maybe not in this circumstance, but we pray for folks through hard times. But this family really needs your prayers continue. Amen. Hey, I'm not trying to throw a damper on the whole thing. I think we ought to rejoice today that Sister Courtney's in heaven. Amen. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Amen. She, we know where she's at. 
Now this, the enviable task stands before you and I and this family that we, we have to. We've got a mandate from God. We've got to get these babies back to their mama. That's your job, and that's my job. We've got to get, it, we've got to get these babies back to their mama. And we've got to get ourselves back to Sister Courtney. Because if she could talk to us tonight, you know what she'd say, or today, you know what she'd say to all of us? Be ready. Are you ready? Don't make me preach before I have to preach. Are you ready this morning? Be ready for an hour you think not. Amen. Stretch your hands this way and let's pray. Father, we love and bless the name of the Lord today. So thankful, God, for this precious family. God, I know that you've ordained the grace already, God, for these children, for this husband, for these parents and grandparents, God. God, I'm praying right now that you would move God mightily by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, that you'd touch these babies, Lord, and this baby, little Abigail, at a young age, God. Lord, let her come to know you, God, in the free, full pardon of sin, that she would serve you all the days of her life. And God, give her a voice to speak to the nations one day. I pray, God, one day they play this tape after I'm dead and gone, and she has accomplished great things for the kingdom of God. That she'll stand up in her little life and make her life count for the cause of Christ. That the anointing of God would come upon her. She'd never be satisfied living in the world, acting like the world, looking like the world, and being the world. But she would have an inward call to come out from among the world and be separated. Lord, touch this family. Bless them and move in their lives, God. God, in the days to come, Lord, we're coming upon the holiday season, God, and I'm praying for a special grace to get through these times with Thanksgiving and Christmas. When families are gathered together, Lord, may the church family not forget this family, for there's one empty seat at the sing house. And God, I just pray, God, your grace and your blessings and your favor upon them. Keep these babies all the days of their life. Lord, I rebuke a bitter spirit that would try to come upon the family. I rebuke that spirit that would come to make accusations against you. I know the enemy is trying to war the minds, and I just speak peace to the minds and the hearts and souls of this family. And Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over these children, God, that one day they would all be reunited with their mother. And God, we give you praise and honor and glory for the hope that we have in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, somebody, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Thank you. Make sure you speak to the family, shake their hand, and let them know you appreciate them being here today. Amen. seen the post of me in the recliner. How many seen that? Asleep. My wife did that. <laughs> she did that. Oh, praise the Lord. Now I'm going to ask you something this morning. What do you want? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> These women all gang up together. How many men know that? Women gang up on you. It's okay, brothers. Don't be ashamed. That's all. <laughs> all right. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. How many's come to worship the Lord this morning? Come on now. How many's really come to worship Him this morning? How many's come to worship your Savior this morning? How many's come to worship your King? Amen. Hey, I like what Pastor said. He's on his way back. Amen. How many know that? How many believe He's coming? I, I want you to do this for me. I, I do it on Wednesday nights a lot, but we're going to do it this morning. Y'all tell your neighbors, say, give me a little room. Tell them, say, because I'm about to worship my God. I know He's your God, but I'm about to worship my God. Amen. So right now, for the next few seconds, I want you to give God your best praise you've given him all week long. Somebody ought to give him a shout. Come on now. He saved your soul. You ought to give him a little praise in the house. Somebody ought to magnify your soon coming king this morning. Somebody ought to reach down through the tiles and worship your Lord, worship your Savior this morning. Oh, so don't stop. Come on, somebody worship me. Sometimes you got to get a breakthrough in your worship. Sometimes you got to stand up in the face of the enemy and say, I'm worshiping him anyhow. Woo! 
Sometimes the life's full of it, amen. But there was one day he came and died on a cross. Come on, he shed his blood that I might have eternal life. If he does nothing else for me, he's been good to me, amen. Amen. How many born again saints of God we got in the house? 
Amen. Y'all give him a praise. How many, how many born, how many's on their way to heaven today? How many's had your sins washed by the blood? I'm telling you, he's been good. He's always been faithful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo. I can't help it. Y'all know me. I get excited because I know where I was going and I know where I'm headed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If our ushers are getting ready, we're going to receive our tithes and offering this morning. Uh, we're still doing it kind of different. We'll have uh, our fit teams get prepared. We'll have two in the front and two in the back. So if you're in the back and you want to give, you can go back that way. If you're in the front, you can come here. And if you don't feel comfortable getting around, just raise your hand. Somebody, uh, the fit team will serve you. Also, we got our kiosk back there. We've got text to give. It's not, it's not up here. We got text to give. You can go online and give, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll, we can get you money anyway you want to give it. <laughs> but, hey, how many, let me, let me say this. I did something the other night, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to project this out for a while. How many believe you can't outgive God? Come on, you can't outgive Him. Now, I know we know what a tithe is. That's a tenth. That's what that stands for. It's 10% of your gross. Can I say that? Is that all right? Is it of your gross income? It's not your net income. Amen. It's 10% of what he prospered you with. But if we can't outgive him, then won't you try him out? I encourage you to give 15% instead of 10. If the Bible says he'll open the windows and pour out of heaven on a blessing you can't contain, then try 15%. Just try it. I mean, if you make a lot of money, that's a big jump. But even if you don't, it's still not 15%. How many know when you go to the uh, uh, the restaurants, you know what they ask you to give a waitress? 15%. Yeah. And, and my wife, she's the good tipper. Uh, she's looking at me. I can feel it. Y'all ever felt that look come from her? <laughs> Just, uh, but anyway, but I challenge you this morning, if you really believe you can't outgive him, then try it. See if you can outgive him. Just try it. That's what he said. He said, try me. Test me. See if, I, see if I won't do what I said I'll do. Amen. So let's get our tithes, get our offering. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for the men and women who are about to give, Father God. We thank you, God, and ask you, God, to take these tithes, take these offerings, multiply for the use of your kingdom, God, that men and women will come to know you through this ministry, Father Lord, and people will be healed and delivered and set free through this ministry, God. And Lord, we ask you right now, God, to bless the gift and the giver as they come to give their tithes and their offering unto your kingdom, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. I got lost in worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give all our guests and visitors a warm welcome, can we? Come on, Mount Valiant's family. Let's, let's give everybody a warm welcome. Amen. Remember this coming Sunday night. <laughs> Keep doing it. Uh, this coming Sunday night, a week from tonight, amen, we're going to have, uh, it's a night of worship, amen. If you bought a t-shirt, uh, you're encouraged to wear one and try to come, bring everybody you can. Uh, we're going to have a really good time in the Lord that night. I don't get, I don't have to preach and I'm about to change mics, I think, but uh, is it okay? Work with it a minute, see if we can make it work. It only weighs 40 pounds, but it's a pretty good mic, amen. And also remember the 30th of this month. Uh, on a Wednesday night, and we're going to start doing this the last Wednesday night of every month. It's going to be Stump the Preacher. Amen. So I want you to come and I want you to bring your theological questions about doctrine, about what you might have been taught versus what the Bible said. There's a lot of false teachers out there. Can somebody say amen? It's the truth. There's a lot of false doctrine out there. Amen. And uh, we're going we're gonna to just move this pulpit out of the way, throw us a little table, we'll have a panel. And we're going to pull from all of our resources. It's bad, isn't it? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pull from everything that we have already, that we've already studied. And we're going to pull from uh, Dake's Bible, whatever, the, and, and whoever I get up here. And everybody will be allowed to ask except for Jesse Youngblood. He's the only one that cannot talk that night. Amen. We'll probably give him the mic, and if he tries to talk, we'll turn him off. Amen. But try to come out. Amen. Hey, and it's okay if you want to bring somebody that don't want to fight. I don't want to fight with nobody. But if you want to bring somebody, amen, uh, that may be of a different denomination that want to ask us of the hope that lies within us, we will be glad to share with them that very night. Amen. Matthew chapter 27, if you have your Bibles. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Hey, I want you to look at three people and say this to them. Look at three people and say, don't be a smoke. We got church tonight. Sunday morning only. What if Jesus comes back tonight and you lay your hide out of church? Oh, I got another announcement. Leonard lost. He don't have the title anymore. Amen. Can somebody give God a good praise? <laughs> he is not the champion anymore of Cornhole. Praise the Lord. Uh, he's speaking those things that are not as though they be. We'll have to see next time we have another championship. Amen. We might not even let him. We might not even let him enter the next one. We we'll let somebody else another chance, and then we we'll give him a chance. Amen. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. We started this little series. It's going to end tonight. It's just three little, a three-part series called the Mountains of God. Amen. We left God the last Wednesday night on Mount Sinai. Amen. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'll get you up to speed. And now today we are going to Mount Calvary. Amen. Matthew 27, 27. Then the soldier of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off him and put his own raiment on him, and they led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Stretch your hand and pray with me for my Father. We give glory and honor unto the name of Christ, God. We thank you for the mercy and grace that has brought us here. Truly, none of us would be here today without your grace and your mercy. Today, help me for the next few moments of time as I attempt, oh God, to speak on the grace and the mercy of God that was on Mount Calvary. God, bless us in your presence. Let the word of God become flesh and dwell among us, God. Let faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. And God, save the lost. Call the backslider home. And God, give somebody power over the enemy before they leave this place today. And we give you praise, honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, shake, uh, sit, sit down and look at somebody and say, please come back tonight. My goodness, what if Jesus was going to come and preach tonight? Would you show up? 
Can I tell you, he is going to show up in all of his glory, but it's going to be by spirit tonight. Amen. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's review just for a, just for a minute. Amen. We talked about Sinai last, uh, uh, last Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night. We talked about the place where God sets boundaries and rules. And there's a lot of churches that are stuck on Mount Sinai. I, I want you to understand, sometimes you can look at these, these at, le at least these two mountains that we're covering. You could look at these mountains and say, hey, I know a denomination like this, amen, or a denomination like that. Sinai was uh, uh, the first mountain that we found God on. Mount Sinai is boundaries, amen. How many understand this? Although we are Christians, amen, and we've been forgiven of all things, there is boundaries, there is laws. I, you know what, can I just say this just for a minute? I, I'm, I don't care about politics, but I want you to understand I am absolutely appalled at what they're doing in California, changing the age of consent to children. I mean, come on, somebody. I don't know, I, I do know, I understand that evil men are waxing worse and worse. I understand that that perverts, amen, are in our government and they need to be voted out. Somebody say amen. That's all right. Amen. Mount Sinai is where God demands. He, he's not asking. We were there this year. Uh, we were there in 2018. We was there at the first of the year. They pointed at Mount Sinai when we drive, drove by, I know for sure, in 18. I remember looking at it as we went by it this year. But when, the first time I looked at that mountain, I stood in awe that all those thousands of years ago, amen, snow on top of the mountain, and you could see it, amen, but you could still see, amen, the place where God came down on the mountain. The whole top of the mountain is still burnt. It's still black. Thousands of years later, amen, where God came down and touched the mountain. There's a message right there in all of that. I could preach right there, and we can have ourselves a mountain, uh, a message on a mountain that says, when God touches you, you'll never be the same. Help me, somebody, amen. I want you to understand if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I don't want to preach that, but, but it is the God's truth, amen. Mount Sinai was where we learned, amen, that God demanded holiness out of his people. Yes and amen. Amen. He demands that you and I come out. He demands that you and I be the light to a lost and dying world. He demands that you and I, amen, clean ourselves up. Amen. That's the problem with a lot of Christianity. We don't. We have weak leadership, amen, that won't stand up and say, God said you can't do that and go to heaven. Help me somebody. Amen. I know I'm preaching better than you saying amen. And I'll run down and sit down beside you and say amen if if I have to, amen, Mount Sinai, amen, shows us that there is a penalty for sin, amen. Can I just stop right there just for a moment? The wages of sin is death. And you know what? We used to beat people up with it. But I come by to tell you this, amen, that Jesus Christ on, a, on Mount Calvary paid the wages of sin. Too many people are still on Sinai. They still recalling all those sins and living in the past and said, oh, I wish I hadn't done that and I wish I hadn't done this, but I come by to tell somebody and the devil today, amen, everything before the cross of Calvary in my life is washed in Calvary's flow. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. I've been changed by his spirit. I've been made new in him. What sins are you talking about? Jesus forgave them all at Calvary. Amen. God said at Mount Sinai, there's lines that you dare not cross. Hey, can I say this this morning? I, I really think California's crossed a line that they dare not cross. I believe if you turn on the television and wonder why that God-forsaken place is being burnt down and people are leaving out of there, it's because of the sin of the leadership that's in that state. Amen. You know something? I, they always talk about build a wall. They ought to build a wall around California and Washington up on that other side to keep that mess from creeping into our country. Amen. I don't know anybody that thinks it's all right to mess with children. And if you do, I want to talk to you after church and you won't like what I got to say about it. Amen. I want you to understand there's lines, amen, that we dare not cross in our country in our communities. There's lines that we dare not cross in our lives, in our nation. Our nation is hinged, amen, right now. And we are at a crossroads in, right now in our nations. And we could go full-blown socialism if we're not real careful, amen. And you know what? Everybody hollering, yeah, I want free stuff. Go to Venezuela if you want some free stuff and see how it's working. All over the world, it's always failed. But America, amen, it's almost like people have been duped, amen. There's lines that we don't cross, amen, and when they start, and the same people are calling for the molestation of little babies, we don't support that mess, 
All right. Amen. If you don't believe it, you better believe I do. I'm telling you, I, I'm, tell, I'm a preacher and I love Jesus and I don't have to repent for what I do. Somebody I caught somebody messing with a little child. And you'd have to throw me out and that'd be all right. I'd start me a jail ministry when the whole, whole cotton picking E block to Jesus. If I had to, amen. Mount Sinai, there's some things you don't touch. I'm going to Calvary. Just give me a chance to review here. There's some things you don't touch. There's some things that you don't look at. There's some things you don't allow in your body. At Mount Sinai, amen, you don't just come casually into the presence of God. At Mount Sinai, we got the thou shalt not. Amen. There is still rules to Christianity. I, I know they told you it didn't matter, but it does matter. Amen. The world is watching and dying and going to hell for the lack of a witness of Christ in the earth. Amen. God is looking for somebody. Amen. That will stand up and be accounted for and say, I'm one of them. I might have had a ragged past, but I've been forgiven. I might have lived like the devil for a lot of years, but God has made such a difference in my life I may have been a lot of things but I have been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God I've been made new by his spirit to as many as received him to them gave him power I've got the power in my life and it's not my power it was his power that brought me up out of the miry clay set my feet upon a rock and established my goings if that's you today give God a good praise hallelujah I'm trying not to preach too much right now See, I'm fat and only got so much preaching, and then I have to go lay down and sleep out here. Amen. At Mount Sinai, we lost, or we found respect for God. We've lost a lot of respect for God. Did anybody see the, did anybody see the, I think he's running for Senate. He's a preacher. He's a pastor. And he stands up and says that God's okay with abortion. He's a pastor. And he's saying it's okay. I want you to understand it's not okay. It's murder. You want to know? You want a good sign that the Lord's coming? Everybody's saying wars and rumors of war, pestilence. We got pest. Let me give you a better sign than that, sweetheart. I want you to understand. Every time before God did something great in the earth, Amen. They started murdering the babies. Look at Moses. When God was going to bring Moses out and bring the people out, He raised up a Moses. What was they doing? They was killing all the babies. Think about Herod and the babies. He he was the butcher of Bethlehem. They called him for killing all those babies. And Joseph and Mary Mary took Jesus and fled into Egypt. Why? It's because they were killing all the babies. I want you to understand this day in this country, better than 3,000 will lose their lives, amen, to, to the gods of sex and immorality because somebody says it's my body and it's my choice. What about the baby's choice? Amen. back to my message. At Mount Sinai, you could die. I, I, don't want you, I, don't want to, I don't want to portray God to you wrong, but I want you to see what the Old Testament God looked like. The Old Testament God, you could die for taking a gaze and look. Go back and look. Sinai was a place where we realized that God was holy and we are not. God said to Moses in Exodus, he said, sanctify the people. He said, and wash their clothes. And on the third day, we're going to have ourselves a meeting. Now, the whole gist of the meeting was so that the people of God could know that God was speaking to Moses and that they would, and they would follow Moses because he heard the voice of God. That's why we don't get our messages from headquarters in Cleveland, somebody. We hear from God. And if you don't get a fresh word from God, you'll never be set free. I don't want to go through the rudiments of religion and stand up and be Charlie Brown's teacher and go, wah, 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 wah. I want to get somebody in the presence of a God that will change them. I want to tell you that the cross of Calvary still bleeds for all mankind, that God Almighty loves you, that his sin is only begotten son, that you might be born again. I want you to know today that there is a God that cares and he wants to be in the affairs of men's life and he's looking for somebody that he can change and he can help today. I hear the pleading of the Spirit in the house. And he said, come on. You tried everything else. Try me. I will make you whole. I got to slow down. 
I may have slept two hours after church today. <laughs> Exodus 20. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, uh, Pastor, uh, could you, uh, could you, uh, would you care to just go up there and see what the Lord wants? You know what they really said? We, we don't want to pay a price like you had to pay. And we're not willing to. And we, you just go up and listen to the Lord talk and come back down and we'll hear you. Let not God speak to us lest we die. You know why that was? The problem was is because there was things in their life that they knew God was going to talk to them about that they didn't want to talk to God about. They said, go ahead, Moses. You go get in the presence of God. Get a word and come back. 2,000 years after the cross of Calvary, it's still the same thing. They said, Pastor, you go get a word and come back and tell me what God said. And I come by to tell you this. Know you not that you're kings and priests unto God. You are the children of the Most High God. And you ought to have a word in your mouth that will set the you ought to be talking to everybody, telling them that Jesus Christ is the answer to the hate, to the sin in the world. The lightning and the thunder and the black cloud and the trumpet and the smoke and the fire was not God. We're just like Israel. We say we want to meet with God. But when we see the demands of his holiness, we start backing down the mountain. Well... I didn't realize it was going. I didn't realize it was going to cost me all that. I don't know if I. I don't know if I really want to. I mean, I ain't really sure about this. I tried religion five weeks later. I tried religion. It didn't work. And you know what? You're right. Religion didn't work. It'll never work. But a relationship with Jesus Christ will set your heart, mind, and soul, body free. Somebody say Amen. Verse twenty-seven, Matthew twenty-seven, twenty-seven. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the common hall. Now, wait just a minute. I want you to get the picture now, Sinai. They put fences up and said, if an animal breaks through, you kill it. Shoot it through with an arrow. To make sure nobody runs up on the mountain trying to gaze. I'm going to kill everybody that looks at me. That's what God said. It's the mountains on fire. There's smoke and there's thunder and there's lightning and there's trumpets and voices. And the earth is shaking. And the children of God said, whoa. Wait a minute, we don't want nothing to do with that. But that was the mountain we just left. We left the mountain of the law. Amen. A lot of people say, well, I just don't believe in it. I want you to understand if you'd live by the Ten Commandments, sweetheart, life would be a whole lot better for you. Amen. Oh, we don't, we're under grace now, preacher. Yes, we are. But I want you to understand that God put the story in the book so that you and I would understand the holiness of God. That you and I would understand that God demands holiness out of his people. That you can't have Christ in you the hope of glory and live like the world, look like the world and act like the world. The holiness of God is what we've been talking about. Now we come to another mountain. Now we're at Mount Calvary. My wife and myself, Brother Philip, Sister Vicky, we were at Mount Calvary this year. I want you to understand it's a real place. I want you to understand that the Muslims, amen, have put on the wall of that right out from it. It, it said Muhammad. Uh, it, it said that, that God has no son save Mohammed and he's his only prophet I want you to understand the world rejects Calvary I don't care what they reject I don't care what they say what laws they pass I come by to tell you it's too late to tell me he wasn't here how do you know he lives on the inside of me he's empowered me to serve him he has brought me out of the darkness into the light and I can't deny him Now we're in another mountain. We saw God and he was mad. You seen the memes? God said, I'm coming down there and I'm mad. It's not true. Not for me and you anyway. That's what the great tribulation is for. It's the wrath of God poured out on the unrighteousness of men. And it's to bring Israel back to God. That's what the great tribulation is for. He's not mad at you today. He was mad on Sinai. The sacrifice hadn't been made. He was mad on Sinai. The blood had not been shed. Now, we come to another mountain, Mount Calvary. We walked the Via Dolorosa. 
this year. The thing, I, I want to slow down a minute. The thing that messes me up, I guess, if you will, is uh, they live there. And they still reject him. I almost understand why Americans don't because they don't live over there. They got, you, you don't understand how privileged you are. I don't care what color you are. You are privileged to live in this country. Help me, somebody. Help me. Hey, I, I know you're afraid. Don't be afraid. This is our country. We love everybody. Hey, I, I just saw, I just saw uh, the, the lady, Tisha, that I, I saw something she put up. And they just had a, uh, the government of Israel had just came together. And it was, I forget what country they were in. There was 20,000 displaced Jews in another country that don't, and, and they've never spoke the Hebrew language. And they had a meeting, and the government is going to see that all 20,000 of those people get to come to Israel. Now watch this. Most of them will not speak the language when they get there. Can I tell you, there's no welfare system over there to help them. You see all, you see all these Messianic Jewish people on there trying to get food to take to the Jews over there? There's no government assistance over there. They're fighting for their life right there in the midst of all that mess that's going on over there, amen. And there's no government government assistance, amen. So you and I live in the greatest country that's ever been known to mankind, amen. And what I can't figure out about them is they live right there. We, we were coming down the road in a bus. We were coming down the road in a bus, and something inside my heart just leaped. I, I mean, just boom. I mean, just, I felt my heart beating up in my ears. It just boom, boom, boom. And I thought, man, we're getting close to Calvary. And I looked. Down an aisleway, a, a little, uh, it was like a little alley. I looked down a little alley in between buildings, and I saw up on the mountain. I, the only reason I recognized, I knew we were getting close because I'd been there before. But, but, but I looked, and when I turned my head, and I looked for a fleeting second, I saw Calvary. You know what? When I saw that, I saw the place where my dear Savior bled and died. I saw the place where the anger of God was appeased toward you and me. I saw the place that Jesus took my place. I saw the place where the blood of the Lamb of God was shed. I saw the place, amen, that he bought me and brought me from. I turned around and looked at somebody and said, he saw the place. Oh, already Ray Chapman. Some of y'all might have known him. He had to say it. My mama loved him. He'd say, Ain't no place like this place, so this must be the place. I looked at that place, an emblem of suffering and shame. People drive by it every day and give it no regard. And some of the residents of Israel speak evil of Mary. And I wouldn't even tell you in private conversations what they say about Mary and what they say about Jesus. And I wouldn't even begin to try to... But I, you know, they're looking for a guy to come back. It's been dead 10 years. They went over to to uh, New York and took his apartment apart and shipped everything to Israel and recreated his apartment. And he's been dead 10 years. And I, I, I've got a prophecy. If you want one, he ain't coming back. Not even in the resurrection. But I want you to understand, I still believe. And Jesus being born of the virgin. Although when I spoke to people that are native to the land, they denied it. But I want you to understand I can't deny it. Because I've been redeemed by the blood that was shed on Calvary. Although they, they disdain her and call her bad names and say Joseph was this and that and Jesus wasn't this or that. I want you to understand they say what they want to. But I know that 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 Jesus Christ walked among us. Amen. We beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Amen. Full of mercy and truth. We beheld him with our own eyes. Mankind looked upon 
on God on Mount, on Mount Calvary. Come on, somebody. Nobody could take a gaze and look at him when he was on Sinai. But now we see him. Now the world can look at him. John said we saw him. Amen. I want you to understand. You can see him today if you look. You ain't got to go to Israel to find him, honey. He's revealing himself. He's walking in and out of the aisles of this church this morning. And he's moving on the hearts of men and women. And he's saying, won't you accept me? Won't you let me be the Lord of your life? I come by to tell somebody, amen, that Jesus Christ did live. He was born of a virgin, amen. And he did die on a cross called Calvary. And on the cross of Calvary is where the grace of God was released into the earth. That you and I, we looked at him on Calvary. They hung their head in disdain. We arrested God on Calvary. And God allowed us to do it. The Son of God allowed us to do it. And you know why he did it? He did it because he loves you. On a hill called Calvary, Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me. He carried the cross all the way, my sins to atone. There they nailed him to a cross. Great was the pain and the loss. He suffered it all because he loved me. Watch, 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 watch. Watch, help me just a minute. On, Mount, on the second mountain. Wouldn't nobody run up on Sinai to get a hold of God. But on the second mountain, we arrested him and treated him with contempt. On the second mountain, we spit in the face of God. On the second mountain, we scourged the Son of God. On the second mountain, we platted a crown of thorns on his head. On the second mountain, we blindfolded him and mocked him and mocked his divinity and said, prophesy, who smacked you? And he created a hand. Somebody said, I ain't never smacked him. Oh, yes, you have, and I have too. Yes, you have. Every time you walked out of a church on an altar call in the Holy Ghost, every time you walked away and said, I'd rather do my own thing, you smack him again. You crucify him afresh again. Every time we crucified the Lord of glory and thought nothing about it and made fun of him and told lies on him and smacked him and planted a crown of thorn on his head. We pierced his hands and feet. We pierced his side. And he allowed us to do it. Wasn't nobody doing it at Sinai, but now we find him. On Mount Calvary, on Mount Calvary, we've treated divinity with disrespect. I saw, and I almost said, a, wasn't a bad word, but it wasn't, I tried to say it anyway. An idiot. I seen an idiot. Somebody said, don't say it like my children. Children, there are idiots in the world. Believe me, I've met a few. Holding up a sign and said, if Jesus comes back, kill him again. Do you see that? Try it this time, sweetheart. I'd like to see this. Can I sit on the front row and watch? As that sharp two-edged sword comes out of his mouth, which is the word of God, and destroys people for that stuff, they won't never do it again. They did it that time, but they won't ever do it again. He'll never come back to Calvary again and be treated shamefully like he was. He'll never come back to this world again, amen, and not have a place to lay his head. He'll never be, he'll never come back to this world again and be treated with such discontent, amen. I want you to understand, he is coming back, but they'll never kill him again. He is coming back, amen, and, and all eyes shall behold him. I want you to understand soon and very soon, we shall see the king. I want you to know today, amen, that Jesus, Jesus is coming. Get ready. Ready or not, here he comes. But I want you to understand, there will never be another Calvary for him. I want you to understand that today. He will come back almost to the place, but he's coming back to the Mount of Olives when he comes back. And when he puts one foot on the earth, that's when it's going to be. Come on, somebody. Help me this morning. We treated mankind, treated God with discontent. Watch, watch. Luke, Luke 23 and 26. And they led him away. And they laid a... Laid a Hold upon Simon of Cyrenian coming out of the country. And they laid the cross that he might bury it after Jesus. Luke's gospel gives us a better picture 
here's Simon helping Jesus. Mary's cross. History records Simon the Syrian was an African man, a black man, stopped and helped our Lord and Savior. Hadn't been for that man, he done fell under the weight of the cross. Hadn't been for that man, we, we, we owe him a debt, we owe him a, a gratitude today that he helped. That same blood that Jesus shed on the cross, he was, a, he was a participant of. Amen. History says he went on to be an evangelist, went on to win many people to the Lord after the fact. Amen. But I want you to understand, long before Simon wrapped his arms around the cross, Jesus had already tested the weight of it. I want you to understand, you, you and I are bearing crosses. And you know something today? Uh, you say, mine's too heavy. He's already carried your cross. And I want you to understand, the spirit of prophecy speaks this morning and says, come on, I'll help you. I've already bought it. I've already took it. I've already carried it. And if I did, you can. I come to tell somebody that's hanging by a thread, tie a knot and hang on. Jesus is on his way to get you. Your cross and your burden is not a strange thing to God. Isaiah said in 53 and 3, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen. That's the wrong scripture, but I'll give you another one. He's despised and rejected of me and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Help me somebody. Make me understand this. Amen. Make me know. I want somebody to tell me years ago that God was on my side. That God knew what I was going through. He knows what you need today. He already carried the cross. He knows. He knows what it is to be rejected. He knows what it is to be lied on. He knows what it is to have people turn their back on him. Amen. Mountain 2. Jesus was described as a man of sorrows. Jesus is described as a man acquainted with grief. And if you're grieving, and I know we have some here today, some that are watching by Facebook that are grieving, all I can tell you to do is throw yourself into the arms of a Savior that loves you. He already knows what it is to be despised and rejected. Look at the Son of God now. He's been beaten and merciful at a whipping post. He's been, smit, he's been spit on and smacked and mocked and crown of thorns driven into his head. And now he's headed to perch, purchase redemption for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. Can I tell you that I've seen people quit I've seen people quit for the craziest reasons. Hey, I, I want to go on record as saying this. If I lose my ever-living mind and join the French Foreign Legion, you serve the Lord. Follow me as I follow Christ. If I ever deviate from following Christ, you keep following him. Amen. Amen. Look, 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 look at this. Jesus could have quit at any moment. He even said to one, he said, don't you know I could call 10,000 angels to come set me free? Don't you understand that no man has taken my life, but I'm willingly giving my life for you? When we come to church looking for somebody to give us a reason to be mad, I don't want to get mad not come to church. I want to come to church and serve the Lord because I love him. And, not, and you know what? The love, it, it was read with Romans 5 and 8, but God commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He loved you first. Amen. Let me move real quick. Here's, 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 here's the problem we have. Here's the problem. They'll come to the music, but we ain't going to, we ain't closing just yet. Because I want to get this point in. This is the best point. In the whole message. Watch, watch, watch. When Jesus stood in Pilate's hall, they made fun of him. did say I said don't you know I've got power to 
release you. I got power to crucify you. Speak this out not to me. Jesus, he did say this. He said, you wouldn't have any power over me if it weren't the Father gave to you. The Bible said he was led as a sheep to slaughter. And he opened not his mouth. See, watch this. This is what scares me to death about Calvary. This is the thing that scares me about Calvary. Everybody knows what God had to say on Sinai. But on Calvary, he didn't say nothing. And now, here's where the church is. Mount Vail included. The church, the body of Christ. Here's where we're in trouble at. Because when we live outside of the grace of God, and you can live outside the grace of God, Judas, the Bible said, fell from grace through transgression. I wish some people get a hold of that watching me on Facebook. You can't just live anyway, just any life won't work. But what scares me to death is, is Jesus don't say nothing sometimes. When we get ourselves in trouble, come on, I'm just going to say it. You ready? I ain't talking to nobody in here. I'm talking to somebody on Facebook, so don't nobody get offended at me. When we're living in sin and having sex with people we ain't married to, I got you one. Here's your one. I guarantee you hit everybody in here. When we hate people that Jesus loves, he don't say nothing. We, we, we treat him with contempt like the cross and the blood was nothing and we just tread underfoot I said this other night I gotta say it again at the first Passover the Passover lamb was to be shared with your neighbors that's the message I heard the blood was to be applied above the doorposts and the lentils it was never put on the ground on the threshing floor as he come in it was never it's, and the church is in real trouble because Jesus ain't saying nothing right now and they're ordaining people living in sin to be in their denominations and they're embracing alternative lifestyles and they don't even preach anymore just meet on Wednesday night everybody gets drunk Listen, I'm telling you this right now. I love you enough to tell you the truth. If you don't like it, you got to vote you another preacher. So I got to tell it like it is. And you know what, you know what he's saying about it? He's saying nothing. And everybody thinks they're just getting away with it. That's the danger of Mount Calvary. That's the danger. We act like that God is not going to give us. We act like God's not going to judge us one day. The Bible said we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. To give an account of the deeds that's done in the body. And you know something? Somebody sitting right here in the sound of my voice and watching my Facebook. You thought you, you, you think because God ain't saying anything, He must be okay with this. And He sent this little preacher to tell you this morning, He's not okay with it. It's the mercy and the grace of God that you're not consumed. Can I, can, can I give you a revelation? It's the mercy and grace of God that I'm not consumed. I'm no different than you, and you're no different than me. I, we put preachers up here. I'm a man like you. I fight more hell than you do. Just because God ain't saying nothing, don't mean it don't have the attention of heaven. And God sent this little preacher in here to tell you this morning, today is a new day. It's a new You know what happened at the cross? You, you, you really want to know what happened? It was so traumatic, it changed time. It was 2,000, 20 years ago. How do you know that? Because it's in the year of our Lord. Even the Muslims, when they say 2020, they say it in the year of our Lord. Everything else was before Christ. 2,000, 20 years ago, there was a new beginning. And God said, I ain't going to say nothing about your sin. Just come on to the cross. God said, I ain't going to say nothing about how you've been living. Just come on to the cross. 
God said, I ain't going to say nothing about your alcohol. Just come on to the cross. He said, I ain't going to say nothing about your drugs. Just come. I ain't going to say nothing about your extramarital affair. I ain't going to say nothing about your homosexuality. He said, just come on. Standing all over the building. They quit playing there. said now is the accepted time would you come would you would you be man enough to say I know God ain't condemn me in my sins but I gotta get this under the blood I gotta get the forgiveness of God in my life see while I was preaching he was revealing to you the things he ain't been talking to you about but now he's talking to you and he's saying get it under the blood He's not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. He's calling them. Listen, I, I want you to understand this. It wouldn't do me no good to come back and just grab everybody and carry them to the altar. It wouldn't do no good. If you don't come on your own, it don't mean nothing. But if you, by faith, I'm telling you right now, make one step. I promise when you make that step, I believe by faith the blood starts being applied to your life. And all those things that's un, all those things that held you back and all those things that's held you in bondage, God, I'm bring them off your life. forever it's open this morning you can come in this morning it might be closed tonight you don't know
got one more thing to say. I got one more thing to say, and we're going to continue to pray, and we're going to continue to sing. But this is what I heard the Lord say. This is, gonna, this is a one time offer right here. It is. We pray over prayer cloths all the time. And I'm not taking anything away from that because I believe in it. We do it all the time. And I've seen God move and cancers drive up and demons driven out of people's lives and everything. But I preached a salvation message this morning. And that's to whosoever will. If you want that, you better come get it and put it under your family member that's lost. You better run and grab it. all I can tell you. Right there it is. Right there it is. Come here. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, touch her husband right where he's at. Lord, I'm asking for this season. There's pleasure in sin for a season. God, end the season in his life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, begin to actively draw him in by the power of the Holy Ghost and save him, Lord. God, let him come to Mount Vale and get saved. I don't care what he gets saved, but God, it'd be an honor to lead this man to you. He's got such a good heart. God, he needs you in his heart. Save him, God. We commit him unto you and we look to you, God, to save him, God. Before he leaves this world, before you come, let Thomas be saved. In Jesus' name.
know what hour, what day God's going to call us home. And I pray that everybody in this service today is ready because I feel like the Lord's coming and He's showing us. And we need to pray one for another. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to be here today. And we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for salvation, that you died, that we might be saved, Lord. We thank you for what's happened here this morning, Lord. We pray that you planted a seed that will grow, Lord, and go out and tell others about you, Father Jesus. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're about to do, Lord. We thank you for your peace and your understanding. And we pray, Lord, that you would go with us and help us to be back tonight to hear the word again. And we ask it all in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.